Hey guys, so good evening and welcome to Anna Academy. I hope I am audible and visible to all of you here in the session, right? I hope I am audible and visible to all of you over here, right? So guys, today we are going to go on with the discussion with the aspect of biodiversity, right? So like in the previous session we had discussed about environmental pollution, in today's session we are going to take up the discussion elaborately on biodiversity. As of what the next session is concerned about, the next session is going to be held tomorrow, right? So we will be having the next session tomorrow wherein we will be discussing the next topic in line, right? So tomorrow we have another session coming up wherein I will be discussing about the next topic in line which is going to be what? The next topic that we are going to take up uh, in tomorrow's session is going to be ecosystems. So tomorrow we are going to discuss the details pertinent to ecosystems, right? So we will be talking about that part tomorrow, right? So that is exactly how we'll be going on about this series over here, right? So I hope you all are clear with respect to everything, right? So that is going to be all about it. So let's get started now, right? So here we begin with the discussion now, right? So let's get going with the discussion over here now. So to talk about it, when we talk about the things here, what we'll do is we'll have a question first. We'll discuss the question uh, pertinent to the current affairs and then we will discuss the basic concept that goes on about it right so coming to the first question for today over here guys what does that say it says consider the following statements about strategic plan for biodiversity 2011 2020 so what exactly is the strategic plan of biodiversity 2011 2020 all about let's have a look at that so this uh, the strategic the first statement says that the strategic bio uh, like plan for biodiversity between 2011 2020 was adopted by the parties to the convention on biological diversity during the 10th meeting of the conference of parties in 2010 in nagoya in japan that's the first one the second statement says that the strategic plan is comprised of a shared vision and a mission or a mission and 20 targets organized under five strategic goals collectively known as the IG biodiversity targets. I will repeat the the first two statements that we have over here are so the question says consider the following statements about strategic plan for biodiversity running between 2011 and 2020. The first statement says the strategic plan for biodiversity between 2011 and 2020 was adopted by the parties to the convention on biological diversity during the 10th meeting of the conference of parties in uh, COP10 in 2020 in Nagoya in Japan. The second statement says that the strategic plan is comprised of a shared vision, a mission and 20 targets organized under five strategic goals, collectively known as the Aichi biodiversity targets, right? Now, which of the above stated statements are not true? Choose from the following A1, B2, C both and D none. That means all of them are correct. Please choose the correct option and comment in the comment section, right? I'll be checking the YouTube comments for your answers now. Please answer.
all right guys as far as the correct answer is concerned over here the correct answer to this question over here is going to be d because both the statements as given over here are absolutely correctly stated right since both of the statements given over here are absolutely correctly stated so the correct option to this answer here is going to be d now why is it going to be d let's have a little more discussion about it so as far as the strategic plan for biodiversity between 2011 and 2020 is concerned it was adopted by the parties to the convention on biological diversity during the 10th meeting of the conference of parties in 2010 in nagoya in japan the strategic plan is comprised of a shared vision a mission and 20 targets organized under five strategic goals which are collectively known as the IT biodiversity targets right as far as the vision and the mission of the same are concerned so the vision here is living in harmony with nature where by 2050 biodiversity is valued conserved restored and wisely used maintaining ecosystem services sustaining a healthy planet and delivering benefits essential for all people right that's the first one Secondly the mission here involved is to take effective and urgent action to halt the loss of biodiversity in order to ensure that by 2020 ecosystems are resilient and continue to provide the essential services thereby securing the planet's variety of life and contributing to human well-being and poverty eradication right that's the second one here Now going on further coming on to the next question of them all here now guys today since it is biodiversity so i have included a lot of questions about different uh, you know animal species organisms also i have added a lot of questions about your national parks biosphere reserves and all those things right so coming to the second question now it says consider the following statements about the indian tiger or the royal bengal tiger that is panthera tigris right so what are we talking about we are talking about panthera tigris now so it says it is the first statement here says that it is the tiger species native to india right what does it say it says that it is the tiger species native to india then coming on to the second one it says IUCN status of the same is critically endangered right the third statement says the largest populations of bengal tigers are in india but there are also some smaller groups in bangladesh nepal and bhutan it may also be present in areas of china and burma coming on to the fourth one it says india is home to about 70% of the global tiger population right so which of the above stated statements are true choose from the following right your options are a 1 and 3 b 2 3 and 4 c 1 3 and 4 and d none please choose the correct option from the options given over here it's a relatively simple one it's not difficult if you try to attempt it correctly you will be able to answer this one correctly right ध्यान से सोचो एलिमिनेट द रॉन्ग वन प्ले विद द ऑप्शन एंड देन यू विल गेट टू द करेक्ट आंसर क्विकली गेट टू चूजिंग द करेक्ट ऑप्शन फ्रॉम हियर और आदर द करेक्ट ऑप्शन फ्रॉम द ऑप्शन गिवन ओवर हियर आई जस्ट लाइक गेट बैक टू द कॉम्पन लाइक द डिफरेंट कॉमेंट्स दैट आई बी गेटिंग ऑन यूट्यूब जस्ट गिव मी अ मोमेंट
all right so as far as the correct answer goes over here right as far as the correct answer to this one is concerned it is going to be c that is 1 3 and 4 Why is it going to be one, three, and four over here? Because of the fact that statement two, as given over here, is going to be what? It is going to be incorrect because the tigers are not critically endangered. Yes, they are endangered. That is true, but they are not critically endangered. That thing has surely changed. Now, because the IUCN status of the tigers has changed, and since they are not critically endangered anymore, what are we going to choose? So, statement two is going. to be outrightly incorrect eliminate option b now let's look at the fourth one so yes it says india is home to about 70% of the global tiger population yes absolutely correctly stated india does hold a very good uh, chunk of the population and that is why it is going to be true so the correct answer here is going to be 1 3 and 4 please choose the correct uh, option like this next time on as well make sure you guys eliminate accordingly rationally usko ekdam se substantiate karo and then choose the answer right so that is exactly how you can be choosing the answers correctly coming on to the explanation of the same so iucn status of tigers is endangered the largest population of bengal tigers are in india but there are some smaller groups in bangladesh nepal and bhutan it may also be present in areas of china and burma india is home to about 70% of the global tiger population and tigers are both the flagship and umbrella species as a flagship species they are important for conservation and as an umbrella species tiger conservation leads to conservation of other species also tigers inhabit 13 countries that is bangladesh bhutan cambodia china india indonesia laos pdr then we have malaysia myanmar nepal russia thailand and vietnam so tigers do have a very elaborate uh, what do we say like you know uh, area that they are covering but primarily they are concentrated in the indian subcontinent right that is there so please read through the slide if you have a doubt regarding any point you please let me know is this clear all right now going on further coming on to the next uh, question over here coming on to the next one here we are going to talk about the snow leopards now right the question here says consider the following statements about snow leopards right now we are going to be considering snow leopards so the first one says it is a schedule one animal under the wildlife protection act of india secondly the iucn status of the same is vulnerable Thirdly they are listed under appendix 1 of sites fourthly the animal faces many threats to its existence due to poaching and habitat destruction so which of the above stated statements are true choose from the following your options are a 1 and 4 b 2 3 and 4 c all and d none please choose the correct option and then i will let you know the answer to this one
all right now coming to the correct answer here guys it is going to be c since all the mentioned statements are correct in addition to that it is a schedule one animal under the wildlife protection act of india the iucn status is vulnerable now please take note that it has recently changed to vulnerable originally the snow leopards were endangered right then we had project snow leopard that was running for quite some time and because of the success of project snow leopard the numbers of all these tigers has increased as a result of which they are no longer threatened and they are not in well, i mean they are threatened but they are not as threatened as they were and which is why they are no longer falling under the vulnerable uh, they are no longer falling under the endangered category but are now vulnerable i will repeat originally the snow leopards that we had were endangered the numbers were dwindling rapidly then owing to the success of project snow leopard the numbers have gained slightly the numbers are increasing the populations are stabilizing as a result of which we are seeing that the iucn status of the same has become vulnerable from being endangered though it still comes under the category of threatened because threatened category includes three sub categories that is critically endangered endangered and vulnerable so yes it is still threatened it is a threatened species uh, owing to the face of extinction and all those things happening habitat changes but because of the success of project snow leopard and like you know very very productive and fruitful conservation practices it has become vulnerable from endangered right Now going on further, they are listed under Appendix One of Sites. The animal faces many threats to its existence due to poaching and habitat destruction. In India, very important, please note that it inhabits the Himalayas at elevations ranging from three thousand to forty five hundred meters across Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Sikkim, and Arunachal Pradesh. So basically, it does inhabit the Himalayan belt area. So as the name suggests, snow leopard, it does live in areas which do have have snow clad mountains during winters right or even throughout the year though but yes it does exist in colder regions right coming on to the next question now it's about asiatic lions i guess around 2017 or 18 there was a huge hue and cry regarding the asiatic lions so you guys might know about it coming to this question here it says the iucn status of asiatic lions is vulnerable Asiatic lions are slightly smaller than the African lions. They they are listed in Schedule One of Wildlife Protection Act in uh, and in Appendix One of Sites as well. Now, according to the 2020 census, this is going to be important. Recent data I have. There are an estimated 674 Asiatic lions, which is almost like an increased or uh, estimate or increased number by 29 percent in the last five years in the Gir Forest region, Gujarat, and other revenue areas of coastal Saurashtra. Right. Which of the above stated statements are true? Choose from the following. Your options are. A one and three, B two and three, C two three and four, and D none. Please choose the correct option out of these, and then I will tell you the answer to this one.
all right now coming to the answer for this one over here guys since we are talking about asiatic lines right so that is the only uh, you know fine line of difference over here <coughs> excuse me some of you might get confused between african and asian lines so asiatic lines have an iucn status wherein they are endangered right so that was the incorrect statement here as a result of which the correct answer to this one here is going to be c that is 2 3 and 4 why is that going to be so because the asiatic lines are not vulnerable like the african lines they are instead uh, like they are endangered right so the asiatic lines are endangered and the african lines are vulnerable be careful with respect to this do not go wrong with respect to this bahut baar aise questions aate hain wherein you know small details are important and you should be knowing them right so please note that the asiatic lions are not vulnerable but endangered whereas the african lions are vulnerable right so please make sure you guys do take account of this same so the correct answer here is going to be c that is 2 3 and 4 Also, guys, the IUCN status is endangered, as we already know. Asiatic lions are slightly smaller than the African lions, which are vulnerable. They are listed in Schedule One of the WPA and as well as the Appendix One of Sites. Also, according to the 2020 census, there is an estimated 674 uh, Asiatic lion increase in Gir Forest region, uh, Gujarat, and other revenue areas of coastal Saurashtra. So, it's increasing in numbers, also, right? That is there. Now we come to the next question about lichens, right? So now we will be discussing the next question in context to or in pertinence to lichens over here. So I hope you guys have heard about or have an idea as to what lichens are, right? So आपने कभी ना कभी तो lichens के बारे में कुछ सुना होगा या you must have heard something about it like that, right? So when we talk about lichens, what are they? Uh, this is exactly in correspondence to that. The question is looped or you know roped in like that. So it says, consider the following statements in respect to lichens. So what does it say? The first one say that lichen is a composite organism that emerges from algae or cyanobacteria, living among the filaments of fungi, living in a symbiotic relationship. I will repeat. Lichen is a composite organism that emerges from algae or cyanobacteria. living among the filaments of the fungi living in a symbiotic relationship whereas algae normally grow only in aquatic or extremely moist environments lichens can potentially be found on almost any surface especially rocks or as epiphytes meaning that they grow on other plants as well more than 20000 species of lichens are found in the world and india has around 2714 of them right so india has about 2714 species of lichens uttarakhand alone is home to more than 600 species of lichens going on further in local parlance these are called as jhula or patthar ke phool right so it is also referred to as patthar ke phool because mostly they are found to be growing on rock outcrops right lichens are slow growing and can live for centuries right that is another important fact here so quickly get to reading from here and let me know which one or what out of these you know so which of the above stated statements are true choose from the following your options are a b c and d a is 1 3 and 5 b 2 3 and 4 c all d none right so please choose the correct option from the uh, options given over here and then we will discuss on further about it I hope there's no disturbance coming. It's raining outside, so sorry about that. All right. So coming to the answer for the same over here. So as we know of lichens, the, all the statements mentioned over here are absolutely correctly stated. So lichen is basically a composite organism. It's a symbiotic association between an algal and a fungal component. That is the phycobiont and the mycobiont. So that is how we talk about it. Lichen is a composite organism that emerges from algae or cyanobacteria, living among the filaments of the fungi, living in a symbiotic relationship. 
वेर एज एलगी नॉर्मली ग्रो इन अक्वेटिक और एक्सट्रीमली मॉइस्ट एनवायरमेंट्स लाइकन्स कैन पोटेंशियली बी फाउंड ऑन ऑलमोस्ट एनी सर्फिस एस्पेशली ग्रोइंग ऑन रॉक्स और एज एपीफाइट्स मीनिंग दैट दे ग्रो ऑन अदर प्लांट्स यू मस्ट हैव सीन दैट मेनी टाइम्स वी सी ट्री बाग्स पर अ लॉट ऑफ लाइकन्स ग्रो विच इज ऑल्सो अ बायो इंडिकेटर ऑफ अ क्लीन एयर इन्वायरमेंट राइट सो दैट इज हाउ वी सी इट more than 20000 species of lichens are found in the world in india and india has around 2714 of them uttarakhand alone is home to more than 600 species of lichens in local parlance these are called jhula or patthar ke phool lichens are slow growing and can live for centuries together right so that is about lichens i hope you guys knew about it right it's an important species you should know about lichens it's an example of a symbiotic association as well as a bio indicator species also in addition to that when we talk about ecological succession the pioneer species which are the first ones to come and colonize an area are usually lichens so they are important on several grounds right please read through this if you have a doubt please ask me all right going on further coming on to the next question here the question says consider the following statements in respect to the eco sensitive zones or eco sensitive areas the first one says that the eco sensitive zones or ecologically fragile areas are areas within a 10 kilo uh, like kilometer around pa national parks and wildlife sanctuaries right whatever reserves we have right going on further they are meant to be shock absorbers and transition zones from areas of high to low protection for wildlife and biodiversity right furthermore it is notified by the ministry of environment forest and climate change under the environment protection act of 1986 and wildlife conservation strategy of 2002 which of the above stated statements are true choose from the following so here we have the options given over here please choose from the following options a 1 and 3 b 2 and 3 c all d none please choose the correct option from the options given here Reread the statements and then choose. If you are able to eliminate, eliminate. If you think all are correct, choose that. If you think none of them are correct, choose that. All right. The correct answer here indeed is C, since all the statements are correct. Now let me give you a little bit more information about the same as well. So we've already read about the first three points. Coming to the fourth one, sensitive corridors, connectivity, and ecologically important patches. That is, area beyond 10 kilometer width can also be included in an ecologically sensitive zone or an eco-sensitive zone, right? So usse zada bhi agar kuch hai, that can very well be included. Also, it seeks to provide special attention to landscape. biodiversity wildlife historical value regulate developmental activities and ensure sustainable development in the ecologically sensitive areas or the eco sensitive areas right please read through this slide if you have a doubt please point it out and i will clarify on the same
all right going on further coming on to the next one here we go on to question number seven the question says consider the following statements in respect to the panna tiger reserve right so now we are talking about panna tiger reserve the first one says panna national park was formed in the year 1981 Secondly, in 2011, Panna was notified as a biosphere reserve by the Union Ministry of Environment and Forests. Thirdly, Panna is the third biosphere reserve included in the World Network of Biosphere Reserves from Madhya Pradesh after Panchmari and Amarkantak. On a separate note, guys, India has about uh, 13 biosphere reserves which are a part of the World Network of Biosphere Reserves. It originally had 12. Panna is the most recent addition. As a result of that, it is important because uh, current affairs significance agya, and since there was a current affairs related aspect or a development with respect to it, so that is why it is very important to know the answer to the same right so which of the above stated statements are true choose from the following your options are a 1 and 3 b 2 and 3 c or d none please choose the correct option out of the lot here and let me know what you think about it quickly Alright guys, the correct answer here is going to be what? It is going to be C since all of these things are absolutely correctly stated. Also going on further guys, Panna Tiger Reserve has been included in the World Network of Biosphere Reserves under the Man and Biosphere Program. Panna National Park was formed in the year 1981. In 2011, Panna was notified a biosphere reserve by the Union Ministry of Environment and Forests. Panna is the third biosphere reserve included in the World Network of Biosphere Reserves from Madhya Pradesh after Panchmadi and Amarkantak. River Kane flows through or flows from the south to the north through the reserve. And as far as fauna is concerned, apart from the tiger, it is home to other animals like the leopard, nilgai, chinkara, chosinga, cheetal, rusty spotted cat, porcupines and sambar, gharials, the long snouted crocodiles and muggers, the marsh crocodiles can also be found in river cane, right? Very important, please remember the same, alright? Now going on further, coming on to the 8th question here. So this is almost science and technology mixing with biodiversity. The question says, question number 8 says, consider the following statements in respect to the Kurma app, right? The first one is, it is a mobile based application aimed at turtle conservation. Secondly, it covers 1100 species of freshwater turtles and tortoises of India. Thirdly, tortoise and freshwater turtles are among the most trafficked in the country, especially to China, no wonder what medicines they are making. Fourthly, it not only provides users a database to identify a species but also provides the location of the nearest rescue center for turtles across the country. Which of the above stated statements are true? Choose from the following. You have four options A, B, C and D. A says 1 and 3, B says 2, 3, 4, C says 1, 3, 4 and D says none. Please choose the correct option out of the options given over here. If you have a doubt, you put it in the comment section.
quickly if you have a doubt you can also put it in the comment section All right. So as far as the answer to this one is concerned, it is going to be C. That is one, three, and four, right? It is going to be C, one, three, and four, right? It is not going to be two Y because it covers eleven hundred species of freshwater turtles and tortoises of India. That is not true, right? India does not have that many turtle species, right? So that is why it's not going to be true. What is going to be true is the fact. that the options 1 3 and 4 as stated over here are absolutely correctly stated as we can confirm from here a little bit more about this is that we've already seen that it is a mobile based application aimed at turtle conservation it covers 29 species of freshwater turtles and tortoises of india tortoises in freshwater turtles are among the most trafficked in the country it not only provides users a database to identify a species but also provides the location of the nearest rescue center for turtles across the country it is developed by the indian turtle conservation action network in collaboration with turtle survival alliance india and wildlife conservation society right please remember the same very very important right please remember the same so this is all about the kurma app now we go on to the next question that is question number 9 it says consider the following statements in respect to pobitra wildlife sanctuary so what do we know about the pobitra wildlife sanctuary here firstly it is also known as the mini kaziranga as it harbors the highest density of rhino in the world and second highest concentration of rhino in assam after kaziranga national park Secondly, Pobitra Wildlife Sanctuary can be divided into three distinct categories. That is, forest, grassland, and water bodies or beals. Right? Beals be होते हैं यहाँ पर. So, which of the above stated statements are true? Choose from the following. You have four options: A, B, C, and D. A says one, B says two, C says all, and D says none. Please choose the correct option from the options given here. and then i'll tell you the correct answer to it quickly choose the correct option from here guys please choose the correct option from here guys All right, guys. So coming to the answer for this one. So when we are talking about the fact that which of the above stated 
statements are true it is going to be all of them right since everything that has been talked about the pavitra wildlife sanctuaries over here is true please note that it is also known as mini kaziranga as it harbors the highest density of rhinos in the world that is absolutely correctly stated also uh like when we speak of this one over here as we know about it and the second highest concentration of rhinos in assam after the kaziranga national park hence the name mini kaziranga pavitra wildlife sanctuary can be divided into three distinct categories that is forest grassland and water bodies or beals now there is an important thing here that there are important rivers which are going to be here right so its boundaries made by the garanga beel on the south and the river brahmaputra on the northern flank right so southern boundary pe kya hai garanga beel hai aur northern boundary pe yahan par kya hai we have the brahmaputra river right so please remember important hai kai baar questions puch liye jate hain remember the same as far as the fauna is concerned over here if we talk about the faunal aspect so please note the same that whenever we are talking about fauna so remember leopard asiatic water buffalo jungle cats flying fox wild boar fishing cat short nosed fruit bat barking deer and the gray masked shrew are all here right so all of them are all of these are going to be a part of this right so please remember the same is this clear to everyone is this clear to everybody over here have you understood the same clear is this clear to all of you if you have a doubt please let me know I hope this is clear right please remember the same now coming to the last question for today over here guys it says consider the following statements in respect to the perrier tiger reserve right what are we talking about now we are talking about the perrier tiger reserve now again the first statement here says that the perrier tiger reserve is located in the high ranges of the western ghat at thekadi kerala its highest peak is kotamala that is uh, you know 2016 like 2016 meters and it is situated in the kadamam hills and the pandalam hills of the southern western ghats which of the above stated statements are true choose from the following your options are a1 b2 c or d none please choose the correct option from here and then we will discuss a little bit more about it just have a look at it All right now coming to the answer to this one over here guys so remember the perrier tiger reserve is located in the high ranges of the western ghat at thekadi in kerala and its highest peak is kotamala 
that is 2016 meters it is situated in the cardamom hills and the pandalam hills of the southwestern ghats the rivers here are like it is drained by the mulap mulayar pamba and perrier rivers tribal communities that are here are the mananas palians mularians mala pandurams uralis and uladans forests as far as they are concerned over here so evergreen forests that also have the only please note the only south indian conifer that is podocarpus volucianus fauna ki jahan tak baat hai so the lion tailed macaque bonnet macaques and nilgiri langur mashir fish asian elephants bengal tiger indian bison sambar deer and the smooth coated otter are present right so all of these are going to be present over here please remember the following right so it is important remember the same from here theek hai that is there now going on further we have concluded this set of questions over here guys let me just change the pdf one moment or rather just have a look at this last slide here ek bar isko pad lo if you have any doubts ask me i have a look at this slide first so that is how the answer to this question here is going to be c right so since all these statements given over here are correct so that is how the correct answer to this question here is going to be c that is all of them are correct right be careful about small things sometimes the name of a national park a wildlife sanctuary where it is located who all are the prominent animals in that area that becomes relevant and significant so please remember the same all right do remember the same All right, guys. So let's uh, sum up the discussion here for today. In that case, I hope you all have understood all of these things correctly, right? Everybody must have understood all of these things correctly now, right? All right now coming on to the next aspect here a couple of announcements to make before i sum up for the day today so as you all already know about all of these things i'll just be reiterating the same very very quickly right so guys as you all would know just a moment All right so guys uh, on this independence day what we are going to be doing is so we are going to be celebrating 75 years of independence series on an academy so we will have 12 iconic speakers and educators who will be conducting 12 talks and discussions from 9 am to 8 pm which will be comprising of back to back powered packed sessions on an academy right you can register using the link given over here right going on further coming on to the next aspect of discussion what all will we be discussing so this is going to be a lot of interesting stuff also people looking out for gs paper 4 this will be very very useful for you all as well because this will be comprising of important thinkers of india right so you will have back to back power packed sessions on the 15th of august 2021 that is this sunday 15th august that is independence day so 9 o'clock we will have the session on raja ram mohan roy then at 10 o'clock we'll have the session on dada bhai naroji 11 o'clock we will speak about bal ganga dhar tilak 12 o'clock we'll be talking about rabindranath tagore 1 o'clock we'll be talking about none other than mohandas karamchand gandhi that is gandhi ji 2 o'clock we'll be talking about abul kalam azad don't confuse it with abdul kalam azad it's different 
then we will have be having a session at 3 o'clock which will be talking about Jawaharlal Nehru then at 4 o'clock we'll be talking about the Iron Man that is Sardar Vallabhai Patel at 5 we'll be talking about Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar 6 o'clock we'll be talking about Bhagat Singh and Chandrasekhar Azad 7 o'clock we'll be talking about Subhash Chandra Bose and 8 o'clock we'll be talking about women in the Indian national moment, uh, like movement right so we'll be talking about so many important women who played a very important pivotal role in India's freedom struggle be it your discussion about Usha Mehta or we'll be talking about others over there so it'll be a power packed discussion session that we'll be having over here here so Sucheta Kriplani all of those are going to be here right also guys we have a couple of offers which are going to be coming to an end on the 18th of August those of you who are looking forward to take up the subscription this would be an ideal moment so we are giving a free extinction, uh, extension up till the mains examination flat discounts and free optional test combo series are also available CSE Assure also applicable on certain kinds of plus subscriptions access to an academy notes test series optionals everything is there so do choose wisely before the 18th of August because this offer is going to end on the same also guys uh, there is a flat 27,500 rupee discount on a one year plus combo a 40,000 rupees discount on a two year plus combo and a 50,000 a 52,000 rupees discount on three years plus combo do choose the same the offer is going to end on the 18th of August after which there is going to be a surge in prices also as we had told you previously also we had informed you priorly that we are taking up optional carnivals wherein we are discussing things at length we had one on the 11th of august now we'll be having one on the 18th of august wherein optionals like history law public administration hindi literature psir anthropology and zoology are going to begin which you guys can get yourselves enrolled for right also guys ultimate test series combo will be given for free with a one year subscription combo or above it is worth rupees 45,000 wherein we'll be giving 21 optional test series comprising of 16 sectional tests and 5 full length tests and 80 uh, tests along with that will be comprising of 50 prelims and 30 mains tests 50 prelim tests will be further subcategorized as 20 full length 12 sectional and 18 topic wise tests right that's how it's going to go the prices are going to increase super soon uh, following the 18th of august so in case you're still looking out for a subscription this will be your moment to go and get it done don't delay it any further also guys we'll be having more of mentorship days also i hope you guys know what the comprehensive coverage tool means you can use the code s sharma 10 to avail the same also as we talk about csc assured what exactly it is going to be all about so the ones who do not know it yet we at an academy endeavor that you clear upsc and if for some reason you're not satisfied with your result the next attempt is going to be on us get a free one year extension on a two year subscription there are certain uh, couple of terms and conditions applicable so you can have a look at those going on further uh, loan facilities are also available for the ones who want to avail the same on an academy also guys 20 books have been created for you guys you guys can refer to the modules and manuals over here furthermore upsc combat is one of the best practice tests which is uh, you know it is a series of tests which are held on every sunday at 11 am you can use the invite code as sharma 10 to avail the same right also make sure you guys do take part in the summit which is curated and led by experts on the 15th of august make sure you do look it out or look at the same also a couple of batches are going to go live now guys which are going to begin on the 18th of august so expedition batches that is english batches for 2022 2023 and also batches for 2021 are going to go live along with that guys tamil batches for upsc csc are also live now on the platform rest you can find more on the plus website right so that is about it right so you can have a look at the same uh, over there right so that is all about it for you guys here right so that is all about it over here guys so on that note guys i will be ending the discussion here for today in case anybody has any doubts i'll be waiting for two more minutes in the session if you want to ask me anything that is not clear please do so right in case someone is having a difficulty understanding as to how you can avail the discounts so while you are proceeding for the payment and you are to choose as to how you are supposed to pay you will be redirected to another page wherein if you have any coupon codes or any referral codes you can apply the same my 